as we talk about every month now, uh, Kodansha has been uh, putting out some new digital licenses every month. And uh, so Kodansha has put out uh, three new digital titles, or will be putting out three new digital titles, along with five new digital Yaoi titles as well. As far as the first three titles go, uh, we first have My Boy in Blue from Maki Miyoshi, uh, which by the time this episode of the podcast is out, you will already be able to buy uh, this August 7th. And uh, is basically about this girl uh, named Kako, who basically gets into this weird, wacky situation where uh, she attends a company mixer, and uh, in order to attend this mixer, she lies about her age. And, uh, you know, this mixer obviously is a party for for singles, and uh, she ends up totally infatuated with a young local police officer. And it looks like, you know, uh, this police officer, you know, the, the, the feelings are mutual, except, uh, you know, he finds out that Kako is still in high school. Uh, so sounds like a weird uh, kind of awkward romantic comedy kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping it's something like uh, what's it called? After the rain. I think that's what that's called. Where it's like, oh, you know, this this girl kind of likes this older guy, but like, you know, it's a it's a relationship that's not presented in like a creepy way. At least from what I've heard about After the Rain, uh, in particular. Um, I don't know. Those are just my assumptions, but. Uh, I'm just hoping it's not super weird. I'm hoping it's just a cute little series. The cover looks really cute. Honestly, I do think, though, that it's going to be leaning towards that the a direction where they do end up getting together. But, like, hopefully it's just like he, they just buy time until she turns 18 or something. I don't know. I don't know. This this policeman guy looks young, so maybe, like, he's only, like, 18 himself or something. Who or, knows? Or, or at least, like, like, 18, 19, 20 years old. Like, I'd be yeah. fine with that personally maybe the ridiculous part about this is that he's 18 and she's 17 and that's <laughs> and that's the thing mm, maybe well, we'll have to see what uh people say about this series but uh next up we have backstreet girls by jasmine G- gia gia i have no idea how to pronounce that last name and i'm so gia. sorry gia yes uh that sounds about right um so uh, Backstreet Girls, I'm sure, you know, anybody listening to, or most of the people listening to this podcast have probably heard of the series through uh, the anime that's out this season, though I don't think it's simulcasting anywhere because I think it's, um, I'm pretty sure um, this is a Netflix show, or at the very least, I think I saw the, uh, like, the ending floating around, and I think there was, uh, Netflix was presented in the credits, so... I'd have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a Netflix show, so it hasn't like ended up on it hasn't ended up on like Crunchyroll or Amazon or anything, at least not as far as I know. But um and, and basically the the premise of Backstreet Girls is that uh it's about these these three Yakuza type guys who basically uh they fail in some assignment and uh as sort of a repayment they undergo this major surgery in order to become this trio of cute female idols. And so basically it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, I guess in a sense, it's kind of like Yankees in the sense where it's like on the outside, they look like this, but on the inside, they're actually this. Cause you know, it's basically, Hey, th- these three Yakuza guys are all disguised as, uh, this idol group. Well, they got sex change surgery to actually look like an idol group. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of, like, discourse about the series, and, I mean, unfortunately, I I don't really have an opinion on the series since I haven't, like, read it or seen it, but, uh, yeah, um, I know there are some people who are not very happy with the premise for this and are very turned off by it which i think is somewhat understandable it's weird i've heard a a lot of people like react to this premise say what the hell is this but like i haven't heard anyone really talk about the series itself or at least i've barely seen it i completely forgot the anime for this already came out like last month because i've seen no one talk about it uh so you know i guess it's not no one's hate watching it at least in the circles that i'm in on twitter so uh, i don't know i read the first chapter of it a long time ago when i first heard of this series i was like what the heck is this and then i read the first chapter and uh it wasn't really the premise that turned me off so much as that i didn't care for the art so much and didn't find it that funny uh, it might work better with voice acting 
and animated. So I, I, you know, if wherever the anime is, if I do check it out, I'll see how that is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I feel like the series is just like this absurd, like transgressive comedy. I, I don't know how offensive it is intentionally or unintentionally. Yeah, me but either. I also don't know if it's good at being funny. I agree with you that I think I would probably like this better animated because I, I think this is something that would really benefit from actual voice acting because it's like, how how can you like watch a show with these idol girls like talking like Yakuza and not find it funny? Like... <laughs> Like I, I could see that I could see that being pretty funny to listen to. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen or read the series myself. I'd like to check it out so I could at least have an opinion. But like, you know, it, it was just kind of weird because like I, I have friends who like, you know, were really kind of raving about this manga. Like, oh man, this looks like uh, this looks like it could be funny. And you know, I knew people who liked it, so it was really surprising for me in particular. You know, when the anime came out and seeing like so many people on my timeline. Uh, really reacting very negatively to the premise. So it was just kind of, for me, it was sort of a, a whiplash almost. But I guess that's just me personally. I guess just moving on from that. Uh, so we have a bit of a, I guess, a license rescue. Because uh, Kodacha has picked up the license for Peach Girl from Miwa Ueda. Which I guess apparently originally was a Tokyo Pop title. That I, I guess they released in like separate series uh they released one half of the series as peach girl and they released the other half as peach girl change of heart which i guess konancha is basically going to be uh releasing both of those um so they're releasing the whole series and from what i could like read of the premise it, it seems really interesting it's a it's a shoujo manga from from the 90s and it's basically about uh basically how the main character kind of like you know, deals with uh, how she's, like, judged in high school for her, like, appearances and stuff because of her, I think, her, like, tan skin or and bleached hair, like, you know, her peers just kind of assume, like, oh, she has a lot of sex and stuff, or, and she's a slut or whatever. Just assume these really, like, wild things about her, which um, I guess from what I hear is, uh, I guess is a really, like, uh, I, I hear people like this series, so I wouldn't mind uh, checking it out at some point. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things, and I'm definitely interested in it. I'm all for Kodansha rescuing a Tokyo Pop series. Now, now if only they could rescue the original GTO, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Though I wonder if this is going to be retranslated at all. Like, if Kodansha is going to provide new translations, or if this is just going to be the old Tokyo Pop translation. Um, I guess we'll just have to see. And then I guess we'll move on to some of the Yaoi titles they picked up. And so, um, oh, you know, actually, I totally didn't even mention when some of these were coming out. So uh, just to back chart real quick, uh, Backstreet Girls will be coming out on August 14th, and then uh, Peach Girl will be releasing on uh, August 28th. Sorry about that. But uh, now we can move on to some Yaoi titles. Uh, first, we have Stray Bullet Baby from Kei Ichikawa that will be uh, releasing on August 21st, as well as everything else I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, all five of these titles will be coming out on August 21st. And so apparently uh, Stray Bullet Baby is about a character named uh, Chihiro Murakami who works at a film advertising firm and looks up to Kiyoharu Hona, the stylish editor of the trendy magazine that his company does business with. He's cool, his smile is beautiful, and he's good at his job, but Chihiro hasn't had a chance to get very close to him yet. However, one day he ends up looking after a dead drunk Hona and goes home with him and exclamation point question mark. Sounds interesting, I guess. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I, I don't really know what to make of it. Um, and then let's see, we have uh keeping his whims in check by Pi. And let's see, so proclaimed handsome elite businessman Yuto Shinonome falls in love at first sight with Tamaki, a beauty who's exactly his type. It hits him like a ton of bricks when he finds out that Tamaki is actually a guy. Nevertheless, Yuto still acts like a kid with a crush and teases Tamaki like there's no tomorrow. So, I guess that could be kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> Next up, we have Intertwining Lives by Kazu, uh, which is about a character named Yoshia, uh, who thinks that it's fate when he's reunited with his first love. However, he learns they can never be together. Uh, for middle-aged scriptwriter Makoto and beautiful actor in the making you, it's a chance meeting in which admiration turns to love and love turns to doubt. 
a young and heart-trending adolescent love story and a bittersweet mature romance. The stories of a group of men who mingle, intertwine, and change. Well, that sounds like that could be interesting, I guess. And then next up we have Key Ring Lock by Yims. Uh, YMZ. It's an interesting uh, pseudonym, I guess. A uh, permanent part-timer Yui discovers a worn-out man fallen on the street. Unable to leave the strangely charming Toshiki alone, uh, Yui helps him back home and then accepts Toshiki while being manipulated by him. However, when Yui gets up in the morning, he finds himself locked in and unable to leave. Confinement is my hobby, says a smiley Toshiki. Uh, is this confinement or is it... Ellipses? <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that really shouldn't be funny. Um, their sensitive love flickers in in space between the normal and abnormal. So that sounds really, uh, sounds kind of uncomfortable, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Not sure if I'm very into that. Doesn't sound like a healthy relationship. <laughs> I'm also not sure if I'm super into this next series. Uh, Trap in a Skirt by <sighs> Pudu Chome. Uh, androgynous Aoi has a traumatic past that makes it difficult for him to get the true satisfaction he desires. Meanwhile, Aoi's classmate Takano, the rough class outsider, makes a move on Aoi whenever he has the chance. Aoi doesn't take him seriously in the beginning, however, and it just kind of trails off. So, I don't have any fate that, uh, that that'll be a very enjoyable series to read, honestly. Trap is a really problematic word. I don't really like seeing it. And the title of the of the series, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable, especially because it gives like a really big mischaracterization of trans people. Uh, so it's not, it's, it's a very loaded term that you really shouldn't use uh, unless you are a trans person who enjoys self-identifying as that. In that case, it's your choice. Yeah, it's uh, the t using that word uh, in the title alone. Turn me turn me off into the series, and then the description, you know, it it implies that there is also going to be like some sexual violence or like some some element of force in the, in this relationship, like coercion. It's the same thing with this key ring lock. I don't. They're not very good dynamics. I don't. These don't seem like a series that will have very healthy relationships presented. So of the of these five uh, Yaoi titles, I guess the one that sticks in my mind is Stray Bullet Baby. Uh, mostly because on the latest uh, One Panel Later, which is this great podcast hosted by two librarians, uh, Kelly on that podcast really uh, was recommending, say she, she really liked Kei Ichikawa's work. So uh, based on her recommendation, I am interested in checking uh, that one out. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Stray, Stray Bullet Baby sounds like it could, it could be kind of cute, you know? Like, so far, as far as, like, the premise goes, it, it doesn't sound like uncomfortable or skeevy at all and i appreciate mm -hmm. that uh maybe uh i guess that's the one i guess like out of the five i would if i had to choose i would probably read personally and yeah i totally agree uh key ring lock and trap in a skirt like just don't they they both sound like they'd be very uncomfortable to read honestly and i just i just wouldn't be into them i don't think mm -mm, not at all um but you know, aside from those two, you know, um, still some interesting, uh, some more interesting licenses from Kodansha. I guess all I can say is I'm looking forward to what they license next month.